What's going on guys? Zuko back with another Dragon Flight video. Hope you are all doing very, very well. I just wanted to do an Ellie Shaman video um, in a plus 24 throne. I also wanted to talk about the general build that you're basically playing right now that we've been playing for a long time. But if any of you are struggling with how to execute that build or if you're brand new coming back to the game, I want to help you understand how to execute the current Elemental Shaman a build that we're running and how to do really well in mythic plus in particular so this is what the talent tree looks like i will have it down below in the description of the video some of the more important things to think about here of course is rolling magma your primordial wave um is going to send out a bunch of extra lava bursts for you which i will uh, affectionately refer to as meatballs in this video and those are going to cool down your primordial wave so this entire build revolves around primordial wave and getting primordial wave back i'm going to show you the rotation really quick we're just going to dive right into it but your wind speakers is the other big one every time you cast an earth shock or an earthquake you, you get an instant cast lava burst that you can again throw out so you're just sending out as many lava bursts as possible in order to cool down primordial wave in order to cast primordial wave again because your tier set bonus has indexed so much of our damage into primordial wave and lava burst in particular that that's kind of how it works now the first kind of like point of contention to understand is in your opener and i'm going to show you this in the dungeon footage but in your opener how do you spread as many flame shocks as possible so that you're getting as many lava surge procs as possible right your flame shock ticks are going to give you lava surge procs that's going to give you more meatballs to throw that's going to be good that's what we want so Ideally, Liquid Magma Totem operates really strangely. It's a really stupid cooldown that like doesn't understand where to put Flame Shocks. So I've had it multiple times where I spread a couple of Flame Shocks and I put a Liquid Magma Totem down and it tries to put a Flame Shock on something that already has it. Or like it just won't, even on these dummies, it doesn't do it correctly. So I'll try and show you that here. But in a real scenario, in a real dungeon, it won't really be like that. You're going to open with Primordial Wave into a Flame Shock. That's because of Surge of Power. So every time you press um, Primordial Wave, remember you're going to get an Elemental Blast for free, okay? And Surge of Power says Earthshock, Ellie Blast, and Earthquake will enhance your next spell. So you press Primordial Wave, you get a free Ellie Blast. That gives you a Surge of Power proc. Then you press Flame Shock, and it spreads an extra Flame Shock. This is really useful, and I'm going to show you in the dungeon, but it's also useful right now. But here's how the rotation goes. We're going to go Primordial Wave into Flame Shock. Then we're going to get a Liquid Magma Totem down. Then we're going to recall our Liquid Magma Totem just for fun and put another one down. And then we're going to press Lava Burst and we're inside of our big damage window. Okay, so it takes a little bit of setup. So Fire Elemental first. Let's do that. Fire Ellie, Primordial Wave, Flame Shock, Liquid Magma Totem. Then we recall it, then Liquid Magma Totem again, and now we're going to go. Now look at all the meatballs. Now we're just going Lava Burst, Earthquake. Lava Burst, Earthquake, Lava Burst. You can hold your Stormkeeper if you want to. Primordial Wave is back. Send it again. Lava Burst, Earthquake, Lava Burst, Earthquake, Lava Burst, Earthquake. Don't do two Earthquakes in a row. There, we got a proc. Now we're going to send Stormkeeper because we got a proc on Ascendant and it gives us some really big Lava Beams, which are really cool. Okay, now we're back to it. Primordial Wave, Lava Burst, Earthquake, Lava Burst, Earthquake, Lava Burst. Earthquake. If your flame shock's getting low, you can refresh it. Lava burst, earthquake, lava burst. It's very simple. Now we're out of lava burst, chain lightning, lava burst, earthquake, lava burst, primordial wave is back. Primordial wave, lava burst, earthquake. You get the idea, okay? That's the general cadence. It's pretty easy. Now it's very mobile because you can get instant cast lava burst, right? Our fire Ellie's back, fire Ellie again, liquid magma totem, primordial wave, and go. You, or your Earthquake is instant, and your Lava Burster. Look at all the meatballs we have going here. It's crazy. Another Primordial Wave. Whenever you get a proc on Ascendance, it sends out so many Lava Bursts that it basically gives you your Primordial Wave cooldown back just like that. It happened right there. So that's what you're looking for, okay? That's why you need to press Lava Burst so much. Look at Primordial Wave is back again. I just pressed it. I'm not even out of the haste window yet. We're going to get another one, Okay. Now we're holding our Stormkeeper, hoping to get a proc on Ascendance so that we can use it on some big Lava Beams. And that's generally how the rotation goes. There's Primordial Wave. Oh, there's an Ascendance proc right there. 
And we go Lava Beam twice. Big damage. And that's it. We got lots of meatballs. Me it's Meatball City. That's what it kind of looks like. Now, important quick note here. Your stats need to be correct for this build to function correctly. Okay? You need to have about 70 to 74 percent mastery that is really important because it's going to mean that every time you send out a lava burst you're almost guaranteed to send out a second one and that second lava burst as we said is going to cool down primordial wave with rolling magma so that's how this build functions if you don't have anywhere near 70 percent mastery or like 75 ideally actually some people have up to 85 but I'm, I'm just going to say for the purpose of this video, you want 70% or above, okay? That's what you're looking for. If you don't have that, you're going to struggle to make this build work. That's just the reality of how this build works. And then over the course of a dungeon, your earthquake damage will not be this high, but your lava burst damage should be around 50% of your damage, more or less. And this is literally all you're doing. I know it seems kind of boring, but there's a couple of little tips and tricks that you want to think about. Here's an opening pack in throne let me backtrack i didn't get all i was just looking through the footage is this the opening pack looks like it yeah okay so here's the throne of tides let me back up a little bit just to get the opener here here's what you're gonna do so i'm wind rushing my fr my people my people my friends i'm just gonna put myself over here because I, we have a wonderful scarf zuko on the left side so i'm gonna get my elemental out then i'm gonna do a flame shock into a primordial wave then i do earth or um liquid magma totem and then i refresh it and i do another liquid magma totem the problem is unfortunately I, I went a bit early he ends up moving out of my liquid magma totems but that's okay we're going we're inside that rotation we're going okay we lost i'm doing big damage and i'm just moving while casting instant cast lava bursts i'm dying so i have to pop my defensive because there's a dog eating my butt in the back here that's okay Keep your Lava Burst going. While, oh, I just got an Ascendance proc. That's good. We're doing some Lava Beams. But mostly what you're doing here is um, the Lava Burst. You're getting Primordial Wave back. Make sure you prioritize Lava. Now, I got another uh, I got another Ascendance proc. So inside of Lust, I think using Lava Beam is very, very good, actually. So I got an Ascendance proc right now. I'm going to Lava Beam a couple times. We're doing 553k right now. Okay? Lava Beam, Lava Beam, Lava Beam. It just does so much damage. With Lust, it does so much damage because you can cast it so many times. But generally speaking, you want to prioritize your Lava Burst cast because they're going to get you more meatballs. Look at the meatballs coming out. Look at that. That felt so good. Let's watch that proc one more time. That just feels so good. Here comes the proc. Ready? This is what you get rewarded for. You get rewarded for pressing Lava Burst. Here we go. Boom. That feels so good, right? So that's what you're looking for. This is why you prioritize pressing Lava Burst. Holy it cow. is very, very important to do that. Uh, otherwise, you're not going to have any damage. So yes, if you get a Stormkeeper, if you get your Stormkeeper and you're kind of holding it, waiting for an Ascendance proc, and then you get an Ascendance proc, absolutely send those Lava Beams. That's a really fun part of the build as well. But if you're not pressing Lava Burst, you're not cooling down Primordial Wave, and then you won't get as many Meatballs as I'm showing you on the screen right here okay it's very very important that you do that okay let's look at uh 301 i'm just going to skip ahead here because i want to look at some specific examples to help you guys out so what if i've used my totem this is a great example here i've used my liquid magma totem and i've also used totemic recall um so i don't have a liquid magma totem for this pack coming up great question what you do here, again, is Primordial Wave into a Flame Shock. Because remember, your Primordial Wave sends out an Elemental Blast, right? So I press Flame Shock first. That's a bit of a mistake. But now I need to wait for my uh, now Primordial Wave on this guy. Now I need to wait. Do not consume it yet. Another Flame Shock goes out. Now I have four Flame Shocks. Or just three, did it? Uh, anyway, I, have to, I should have four. Anyway, that's all. That's what you need. You need to have at least three because your tier set bonus will send extra meatballs at two additional targets. So you need to have at least baseline three flame shocks in every pack. That's what you're looking for. And if you just go primordial wave flame shock, you'll get that. I did it in the wrong order here. But that's the idea of what you're trying to do, okay? Then you can get into your rotation and start going crazy. As the... As your flame shock comes back off cooldown, you want to keep spreading flame shocks for sure. You want the pack to have as many flame shocks as possible because that gives you more lava burst procs from lava surge, right? So just a quick little example of what to do if you do not have your 
Liquid Magma Totem right up, okay? We're going to kill this pack. And then right after this pack, again, I this is where I, I have all my cooldowns up this time. Now, this is only a pack of three, so using double Liquid Magma Totem might not be the best idea. But this is a very dangerous pack. It's a plus 24 thrown, fortified weak, so they're very dangerous. So I go Liquid Magma Totem. And then I refresh it. I do another Liquid Magma Totem. Then I do Primordial Wave, and then I'm going. And my damage goes pretty crazy here because I got a Descendants proc right off the bat. Get some Lava Beams in there. So I'm just blasting this pack. We're trying to absolutely decimate this pack. We're all almost... I'm almost doing 400k. Like, we're just destroying this pack. So sometimes if there's, like, a priority pack... You can just dump all of your cooldowns like that. But just remember, if you do that, you're not going to have Liquid Magma Totem up. And I thought he was leaving this pack over here. This is why I did it. I thought he was going to leave this pack alone. He was not doing that. He's Now he's going to pull this pack. So now I don't have Liquid Magma Totem. But once again, Primordial Wave into a Flame Shock. And it's all good. And again, I messed up the order again. I don't know why I was being such an idiot here. But I get all three Flame Shocks out. I do it the hard way, the bad way. Don't do it that way. Just Primordial Wave into a Flame Shock, okay? Then you're off to the races again. And um, packs of three are really good for Ellie Shaman. Like, really freaking good. Now, my Flame Shocks are falling off. I need to refresh them. There we go. They're back up again, and we got an Ascendance proc. Always have your Flame Shocks up, because if you get an Ascendance proc, you'll be very happy that you did. If you get an Ascendance proc and you don't have any Flame Shocks up, you're going to be the saddest Elemental Shaman who ever lived, okay? So, uh, don't do that. Now... We're going to skip past this next boss. Basically, the only advice I would have for you on this boss uh, is to save your AoE for the um, the phase when she phases. She phases at 60%, and she's going to phase right here. So when she does high tide, she brings down a bunch of adds. Very important that you use your kick here. As a shaman, you have the best kick in the game. Um, if you don't use it correctly, like if you don't use it on the frost bolt, it's going to be really difficult for the tank to group all the mobs up. So... Use your kick. Use your liquid magma totem here. Use your stormkeeper here. Don't use stormkeeper on pull. Just save those cooldowns for this intermission. Um, and then you can absolutely blast these mobs. Uh, I did an okay job of it here, but it wasn't super good. We're going to move to the next boss, though. This next boss is pretty cool. So uh, you'll have lust for this boss. So you should be doing a decent amount of damage. You can see we're doing 190k almost right here. Get my Primordial Wave back. And then there's a Festering Shockwave. After he does Festering Shockwave, he's going to spawn a bunch of uh, oozes. You can see he's doing Awaken Ooze right now. So it depends who you have in your group. But what you need to do, somebody in your group needs to knock back these adds. They need to be knocked back. And you do that by pressing any AoE ability on them, basically. It used to work for things like Earthquake and Healing Rain with like Acid Rain for Resto Shaman, it doesn't seem to work that well anymore or it only knocks them back like once and then they just walk right over top of it. So ideally, you need to cast abilities that are going to directly hit these mobs. So I start casting Chain Lightning and I think the healer was actually doing Holy Nova. So that's a much better solution. There's a Holy Priest here who was just doing Holy Nova. I should have just let him do that. I just didn't know. I was in a full pug here. I didn't know if he was going to do it or not. I wasn't even really paying attention. So that's kind of my fault. But ideally, you want your healer to come up with some solution for that. And he could have done that. I just messed up. I just didn't know. So I cast you. But if, you, if you're in a pug and you're not sure... If anybody's going to help you, just do it yourself. Just press Chain Lightning and knock those enemies back. You need the puddles to get knocked back because those guys are going to leave extra puddles as well. So you have to make sure that they're knocked back. So just a little word of advice for this pull. It gets much more dangerous as the fight goes on. Like right now, you're going to see it. Here comes a bunch of oozes now. So I cast Stormkeeper and knock back one pack, and then I knock back another pack. And then I'm just continuing to cast ch uh, Chain Lightning to knock back more of them, okay? And then that means that the puddles drop right here. So that's the strat for that fight. Make sure that you do it or else you'll end up um, having the oozes stand right on top of you and then you'll be absolutely dead and everybody will be mad at you. <clears throat> Here's the long corridor with the grippy boys, the boys that are going to, they're just going to pull you in with a big slam, right? So on this corridor, generally speaking, Speaking, you want to make sure that you are using things like Spirit Walker's Grace to dodge the crushing tentacles so that you can keep casting while moving. 
Generally speaking, this build is very mobile. Watch this, right? Now I'm going to get pulled in. Then I can jump out. I can cast a Lava Burst into an instant Earth Shock into a Lava Burst. So this build is very mobile in, in general, just generally speaking. But this corridor is very difficult. You need to make sure you use your tools like Spirit Walker's Grace to maximize your damage as much as possible. Here's the next pull. Same idea. But again, if you can just do an instant cast Lava Burst, like right here, what do I have? I have a Lava Burst that I'm casting. So I need to stop doing that. So I have to jump. So I cast my instant cast lava burst into an earth shock or an, uh, an earthquake. But at some point in this corridor, you do want to use Spirit Walker's Grace. I'm actually using it right now just so that you don't ever have to stop casting. You don't want to stop casting. The moment you stop casting, the moment your damage will go in the toilet. And you can see we're doing pretty great damage here. It's, it's really competitive, right? So um, that's the, my word of advice there. At the end of this corridor, there is a very difficult pack on Fortify Week. These guys, sorry, let me just back up a little bit. These guys here are very difficult. These psionic blasts that go off, the pulses, sorry, you, they need to be CC'd. So, a word of advice here, use your Liquid Magma Totem and then recall your Liquid Magma Totem and then use it again before you use Cap Totem. If you use Cap Totem, then your a Totemic Recall is going to recall Cap Totem. So, get your Liquid Magma Totems out of the way then use Cap Totem, and then you won't have a problem with that. So sometimes I, I, I made that mistake as well. Here's the next boss. The only thing you need to try and do on this boss, if you can, is line up your Primordial Wave with the Totem. If you have Primordial Wave on pull, just send it. Don't hold Primordial Wave. But as the fight progresses, try to maximize the number of Lava Bursts that you're casting so that you can cool down Primordial Wave. I get Primordial Wave back again, and I send it right now because... You have to send it as soon as you get it or else your damage is, is just terrible. So I'm trying to get it back. I'm not going to get it back before this next totem, but that's okay. <clears throat> I will get it in, uh, by the, I think, on the next totem. So this totem spawning right here. We're not going to get it up in time. You want to make sure you can nuke down this totem as fast as possible. Otherwise, the tank gets wrecked. So I'm casting Primordial Wave again right here. I have 16 seconds. You can see this marker here. I will link this add-on down below if you guys want me to. This shows the abilities that are coming for the boss. This, this shows his next Flame Shock. It shows his next totem. Very, very uh, good add-on here. So I have 16 seconds to reduce the cooldown of my... Um, Liquid Magma Totem... Or of, of my... There, I get a sentence proc of my pr Primordial Wave. So I get um, Lava Burst. I use Spirit Walker's Grace to move while casting. And then I get my Primordial Wave back right when the totem comes back. Boom! Right there. So then you send your Primordial Wave into the totem. And you just blow up that totem. Watch it die. It died so fast, right? So that is what you want to do on this boss. That's the strategy that you're looking to employ. That'll help you out a lot. This is a really funny moment right here. This is hilarious. This is a really nasty pull. Be really careful here. <laughs> I was like, this is a really nasty pull. We got to be really careful here. And then I just immediately die. <laughs> Thank God, though. I put my, I put my Liquid Magma Totem down. And I... Have not sent Primordial Wave yet. Really? So oh, I'm going to send Primordial Wave now, and I'll actually get to do my damage, even though I died. So that was really good. Obviously, on the damage meters, it looks really terrible. Look at the uh, Paladins doing 1.13 million. Oh, but we're going to catch up here, and it's okay. We ended up just dying on pull because we don't have okay. a Paladin okay. bubble to keep us safe, basically. So we did end up still doing a decent amount of damage, even though we died. But it was just a really funny moment. This last corridor is very difficult. <clears throat> this is Fortify Week, so these swells from the sentries do crazy amounts of damage. This holy uh, priest did a really, really good job keeping us alive. He was fantastic. Yeah, we were laughing pretty hard on stream about uh, me dying really quickly like that. So, <clears throat> basically, uh, I hold my Primordial Wave at the end here. I don't think I should have actually. I was talking to chat, so I was distracted, but I should have been sending my Primordial Wave here. If an enemy has, like... 30 to 40 percent of their life left you should send primordial wave that's a, just a general rule obviously it's better on an aoe pack but um you just need to send it because it's all your damage is wrapped up in that cooldown so now we're going to go to this next pack this is again very dangerous but i want to do liquid magma totem here into primordial wave and i recalled it so i have two liquid magma totems going so my aoe damage goes way up they do a lot of damage liquid magma totem does a lot of damage just on its own so don't underestimate that i got an ascendance proc into a stormkeeper lava beam so we're it's good we're getting lots of damage out on this pack i end up dying out double aqua blast sometimes there's nothing you can do if aqua blast is not getting kicked or stunned or cc'd you're just going to end up dying so 
<clears throat> that's it. This is the final quarter. We do this last century here. Here comes the last century, and then the tank just goes, okay, we're running out of time, so we have to do a Giga Chad pull, and he just goes for it. I was not expecting him to do this. Uh, should we really be running forward like this? Oh, my God. What is he doing? I was so worried. No, dude. So you have to just CC this pack like crazy. If two Aqua Blasts go off or three, you're just dead. So um, there's a Shockwave. My damage out now. I'm going to die. Earthquake is really good here. Earthquake is actually really, really good. You can see the Earthquake symbol around their heads a few times. So look out for the Earthquake symbol. Knocking these guys down is, like, incredibly oh strong God. here. So getting as many Earthquakes on the ground as you can to do as much uh, disruption as you possibly yeah, can. We're doing it. We're doing it. Oh, I think somebody ends up dying here. Look at the priest almost dies. It's so close. <clears throat> that was good. Then we have double swell. I used Ancestral Guidance on the first swell. You can see I'm popping it right now. I'm healing. And we're doing about 30k HPS, 32 k HPS right now, which is very good. And then I have my defensive for the next one. So that's what you kind of want to do. And um, do as much damage as you can, get primarily way back. Two target cleave is pretty good, actually. For Ellie Shaman, three target cleave I think is like the best, but um, two target cleave is fine. Because having an extra, an extra flame shock just gives you extra um, procs on lava surge, which is just the way you want. It's just so, so good. There's an Ascendance proc. And then I do have Iridals in this dungeon. I will make sure I say that. I have Iridals as my weapon. Um, I do have a Mythic Iridals, so it's very, very good. I think there's a better weapon to get from Raid. If you're thinking about what's my Biss weapon from Raid, uh, there's a better weapon from Raid. It's like the Shadow Flame one. It's like a mace that does Shadow Flame damage. And then just like a Mythic Shield is very good. Um... So it's up to you. But now, here's the final boss. We have Lust. We pop it, and we go. <clears throat> For single target, I start out with a Lava Burst into a Flame Shock. I don't know why a Flame Shock first. Anyway, get one Lava Burst on cooldown, because when you press Primordial Wave, it'll give you a Lava Surge proc. So if you just press Primordial Wave on pull, you're wasting one entire Lava Surge proc. So Lava Burst here into Primordial Wave gives me Lava Burst back. I press it again. Then I go Earth Shock. Lava Burst, Earth Shock. Again, we have really good mobility here because we can get instant Earth Shocks into instant Lava Bursts. Very, very good. Now, I blew my Stormkeeper really early. This is very bad. I don't know why I did that. Don't press Stormkeeper right away. You want to press Stormkeeper right now when the ads are spawning. I don't know what is wrong with me. I was having a really off moment there. But I spread my Flame Shocks with Liquid Magma Totem, and then I Primordial Wave another target. So I actually have one, two, three, four, five flame shocks out. This is really what you kind of want to do on this fight is get as many flame shocks in this moment as you can because it gives you a huge haste buff. Obviously, it does a lot of damage, and you're not padding damage here. The adds do need to die. This is very important that the adds die. But in terms of rotations, make sure you pop Liquid Magma Totem for these adds and Stormkeeper for these adds. Don't Stormkeeper on pole. That's a big mistake. Um, but you do need to kill the ads. So don't think of it as like, oh, you're just padding. It's like, no, no, they need to die or they're going to kill you with like ink blast. It's very, uh, very annoying. So anyway, then you're back to uh, lava burst into, into earth shock, into lava burst, into earth shock. You're basically just going back and forth as much as you can. This is a good moment here for Spirit Walker's Grace. Move while casting. Very, very good moment here to do that because I need to get rid of the sludge that's on the ground. I got an ascendance proc. I'm trying to spread as many flame shocks as I can here. And then the ads just died immediately because Fury Warrior and Rat, Pal Rat Paladin have really, really good uh, burst AoE. So that's great. It's actually fine. I'm not, like, mad about it or anything. It's, it's really good. You need those tools in a key. Then we get the thing again. And um, that's the rest of the fight. That's basically it. I had a Chain Lightning there for the ads that time because I'm not a complete buffoon. And we get to the final phase. And uh, there we go. That's it. I got a Primordial Wave in the final phase. Pretty good. I was in Descendants for, like, the entire the final phase, which is kind of crazy. There's our overall damage there, 223, just a little bit behind the other guys. But I, I, get, I made a couple mistakes. Um, I can definitely clean up some of that play, but it's looking pretty good. Here's the overall damage. Lava Burst should be closer to 50% of your damage. So that's your metric for understanding how well you played the key. If your Lava Burst damage is closer to 50% of your damage than it was for me, then you played it better. Probably like 45%, I think, and up is what you're shooting for. So I was a little bit below, 
that's just something for me to work on. There's Earthquake, Flame Shock, Chain Landing. There's the rest of it there. Um, but that's ideally what you're kind of looking for, okay? That is an Elemental Shaman video trying to show you guys some important moments, specifically about Liquid Magma Totem and uh, Surge of Power, which is the main way that you're going to keep those Flame Shocks up. And that is, that is your bread and butter. You keep those Flame Shocks up, then you keep getting to press Lava Burst. The more Lava Burst you press, the more you cool down Liquid Magma Totem, or sorry, the more you cool down Primordial Wave. The more you cool down Primordial Wave, the better you're going to interact with your tier set bonus, and you're just going to do way, way, way more damage. So that's it, guys. That's that's um, that little guide for you. Um, skip around to the rest of the video. Make sure you go check out how to do the rotation on the dummies. But that's how it looks in practice. If you have any questions for me, drop them down below in the YouTube comments. Jump in the Discord. If you have like a screenshot you want to share with me, like, hey, I don't understand how this works, whatever, jump, jump in the Discord down below. And I will also link the um, add-on that I have that's going to show the ability names. I believe it's called True... Nope, that's the other one there. I'll, I'll link it down below. Don't worry. I will link it for you guys. And you can see everything down below. So thank you so much again for watching. I love you all. I will see you in the next one.